What's up guys? Welcome back to Code Porn. This week's episode is a subscriber question about the strategy pattern. I recently interviewed for a dev role and the interviewer asked me to explain the strategy design pattern and how it could be used in a real world application. I sort of knew how to explain what it was, but I was unable to think of a good real world example of how to use it. Maybe you could do an episode to explain it and then demonstrate it with a good example. Thanks. This is a common question actually. And if you have any questions of your own that you want answered, click the subscribe button and send your questions to codeporn.show at gmail.com. So the strategy pattern is what is known as a behavioral pattern because it changes the way a particular piece of code behaves. But what does that really mean though? Well, let's say that you have a piece of data and this piece of data, depending on certain criteria, will need to be processed using one of 10 potential different ways. With the strategy pattern, you have a group of potential strategies or processes with a common interface. At runtime, you decide which strategy to use and then send your data down the path using the selected strategy. The whole goal here is to have an interchangeable section of code. It's really not as difficult as it might sound, so let's take a look at a real world example and you'll see how easy it is. So what we have here is just a basic WinForms project and on the wind form, we have a picture box, we have a load image button, and we have a save image button. Now the load image button, it does nothing more than just load a standard JPEG uh, in from our project into the picture box. And then the save image is where the magic happens. So let's take a look here at the load button. So again, it does nothing but load our test image in. But button two here, this is our save button. Now, initially what we're doing is we're creating a save file dialog, and then we're setting the dialog filter to image files only. So bitmap, JPEG, PNG, and so on. Now the whole point of this example application is to take in or load an image and then give the ability to save that image to different image formats. And we do that using the strategy pattern. So in our save method, once we've acquired the file name from the save file dialog, we're gonna define our strategy member, but we're not going to initialize it yet because we haven't determined which strategy we're going to use. So we get the file extension that the user has typed into the dialog box, and then we evaluate that down here with this switch statement. Now, there are more elegant ways of selecting a strategy, but for this example, I'm just gonna simplify it and we're just gonna use this switch statement. So in the case of a JPEG, we're going to instantiate a JPG strategy. For PNG, we have a PNG strategy, PDF strategy, GIF strategy, and so on. So once we've assigned the strategy, we've instantiated our specific strategy we want to use, then on that strategy, we call save image, and then we pass in the image data from our image control. Now, if we step back for a second, let's take a look at the iImage Save Strategy interface. It has nothing more than a single method called Save Image, and it takes in image data. Now, if we look over here in our Solution Explorer, we see we've got our different classes. This is the BMP or the Bitmap Strategy. And in here, we're just inheriting from the iImage Save Strategy interface and then implementing the Save Image method. Now for this demonstration, I'm not actually going to write the files out to these specific formats, but you can get the point of what's happening. So this is how you would set up your strategy or the strategy pattern in your solution. I've just grouped them into a folder, but you may group them however you want. So from there, we have a single interface. This is a single line of code. Now with this single line of code, we could save the image to any one of these formats. So JPEG, PNG, PDF, whatever. It's all dynamic. So this particular line of code is going to change or have its behavior changed dynamically at runtime based on the set of criteria put in by the user. So let's go ahead and run this and we'll just kind of step through it and see what happens. So we'll load the image and then we'll click save image. And we'll just call this test image two. And let's just do a PDF, how about that? 
So we'll save and we've hit our breakpoint here. So now we're evaluating the extension of the file and we've hit our PDF strategy. So we're going to instantiate it with an instance of PDF strategy. So we'll just F10, we'll get out of switch statement. Now we're at the line where we're invoking save image from the interface. And if we F11 into this, go ahead and click yes. Now we see we've ended up inside the PDF strategy where it will save the image data out to a PDF. So we'll go ahead and continue that. Now let's do this again, but let's do a GIF this time. Now again, we're using the same method, no additional code. Let's just step through it. Now we've hit the GIF case and we're going to instantiate a new GIF strategy. So we'll get out of here. Now we're calling save image method on the interface again. So we'll F11 and now we're inside the GIF strategy. So if you use your imagination, you can imagine how easy it would be to add a new uh, image type. So let's add a new one here. We'll call this one TIFF strategy and we'll save it to the TIFF format. Save that. And now to implement this strategy, all we do is Add a new case for it, and then set the strategy to TIFF strategy. And that's all there is to it. So now if we run this, load the image, save the image, TIFF, step through it. Now we are in the TIFF strategy where this particular class will save the image out to a TIFF format. And that's all there is to it. It's that simple. That's the strategy pattern. All right, that's it for this episode. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you like this video, click that like button or leave a comment and let us know what you think. Thanks for watching.